your seatbelt. It's going to be a bumpy walk. Chrissy is hilarious. Chrissy, have you ever heard of the comedian Basha K. Ali? No, that sounds like something you yell at before you blow up a plane. <laughs> 30 seconds remaining. Like, you know, what could you say? I doubt it will stand up to something. I haven't been disrespectful to you at all. I was very confused by the title, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, because that's also what we call it when the ass takes off his shirt. (laughs) (laughs) I shouldn't be up here. I should be in school on the other side of the ocean. What's up, boys and girls? Welcome to another episode of the Chrissy Mayer Podcast. We can you can find us on iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, SoundCloud, Rumble, Rockfin, everywhere fine podcasts are sold. <laughs> I got a bunch of stand-up gigs coming up. Uh, I'm heading to California tomorrow. I'll be headlining in Pasadena this Thursday, the 23rd, at the Pasadena Elks Lodge. Woo! This show is sold out. So unless you're some kind of a VIP or something, you reach out to me directly. Uh, this show is sold out. Then I got two shows coming up in San Diego this weekend. One Friday, one Saturday, the 24th and 25th at the Mic Drop Comedy Club in San Diego. I think that's Spanish for the whale's vagina. I can't remember. Uh, then I'll be headlining in New York City March 25th. Tickets will hopefully be made available for this soon. Those guys got to get their shit together. Uh, That'll be at the Grizzly Pear Midtown, March 25th in New York City. Then I'll be at the Reef uh, in Staten Island, Friday, April 7th. That's the Reef at Paradise Island in Staten Island. Then Saturday, uh, April 8th, I'll be in Morris Plains, New Jersey, headlining Tiff's Ale House, also known as the Dojo of Comedy. Then back to Dallas, for Cinco de Mayo weekend, Friday, May 5th, and Saturday, May 6th. Two shows Friday, two shows Saturday at Hyenas in Dallas. Lila Hart will be opening for me uh, in Dallas, as well as this weekend in Pasadena in San Diego. Then we got Anime Matsuri coming up in August. Simcast will be at this convention Thursday, August 10th through Sunday, August 13th at the George Brown Convention Center. And I will also be headlining that same weekend in Houston at the Secret Group Friday, August 11th. So get your tickets now. This will be kind of like an unofficial after party for Anime Matsuri. It's still early enough. You can do uh, other things, put your drink on before and after the show. And it should be a lot of fun. Excited to see all you guys down there. All right. I'm so excited to bring in these people. Wow, what a smooth transition off of the music. Uh, Some of you guys might be, you know, I guess if you are sick of Eliza Blue, you're probably not listening to this live stream, but it's been going on. Wow, today marks exactly one month. We didn't even plan this, but today is exactly one month since Brittany Venti got censored off of Twitter. Now I know people go, oh, censored. She could just delete her tweets and get her account back. Well, it's called having principles, you assholes. Okay. And, and she shouldn't have been, she shouldn't have been locked out of her account in the first place. Um, and if you've been following this story closely over the last month, you know, you've certainly heard plenty from myself, Fair and Balanced. Uh, Anna, that Star Wars girl, has done a lot of videos. On, certainly the quartering. Uh, He was the first to sort of follow Venti and and throw himself on the sword there on Twitter. And, you know, unless you're like been really following this super closely, you probably can name everybody involved. But I wanted to do this live stream to kind of highlight some of the other content creators who have been doing just a great job um, investigating different pieces to this story. And you may have heard some of these guys on, you know, the various We've done a bunch of Twitter spaces, uh, or this could be the first time that you're hearing from some of these people, which is great. So I'm so happy to get everyone together kind of in one spot so we can compare notes and compare stories. Uh, welcome to the show, Artha, Mezia, Christina, L or Lauren, and Greg Hoyt. Hello, guys. Hi. Hi. 
Hi, guys. Look, we're all Hello. looking at each other. Hello. <laughs> um, this is so <laughs> fun. This feels, like, this feels like one big blind date. Um, everyone's <laughs> kind of <laughs> sometimes. And there are some people who've been working on this story that, that don't show their face at all. I think Louie Anon is one person. Uh, and that, that crabby guy. It's The internet is a strange and wonderful place. Um, but it's great to see everybody's faces. And and I it, I can't believe it's been one month that we've all kind of been covering and following this story. And not much seems to have been done in terms of Venti getting her account back or Twitter making any kind of a real statement acknowledging it. I mean, they kind Ella kind of danced around it when she, when she posted, oh, we, we have some updates to our our system of. Uh, you know, sending in a claim of getting your account back, but I don't know. I don't feel satisfied with, with what's been done. So I'd love to just go around and let each of you kind of introduce yourselves and take a couple of minutes to explain how you got interested in this story, maybe methods of digging or anything interesting you found. Um, and just sort of let each of you give, you know, give you a few minutes to kind of talk and, and let people know who you are. And let's start with Christina Radix Verum. And maybe you could explain what Radix Verum means. Is that Latin? <laughs> yes, it's Latin for the root of truth, which I just thought sounded really cool. Um, I research a lot of different things. I'm sort of like an independent journalist. I cover politics, whatever's interesting to me. I'm working on a documentary right now on the Michigan uh, Governor Gretchen Whitmer kidnapping plot case. So that's taking up a lot of my time. But I also have covered things like Jeffrey Epstein's trafficking ring and the intelligence apparatus that was in the background there. And um, I don't remember how I came across the Eliza Blue thing. I think I was just like checking Twitter one day and I, I believe I saw Brittany's tweet where she had Defango's thread. Um, about Eliza. And I had followed Eliza before because she was like somehow connected to the Jeffrey Epstein thing. So I guess I had followed her and I didn't really know much about her. I just saw some of her tweets and I agreed with like what she said. So I just followed her. And then I looked at that thread and I was like, wow, who is this person? And the more I started kind of researching her background and just looking at that stuff, I was like, whoa, this person's like a freaking chameleon. Um, and it's really weird. And I kind of like in my mind was like, wow, she reminds me of this other person that I have been researching, um, Kirby Somers, who I guess is another like Jeffrey Epstein researcher or, you know, she's written some books on it. I know that she's on Twitter and stuff, but she claims to be like a survivor of trafficking also, but there were questionable things in her background as well. So that's sort of how I got into looking into her more. And then my first video um, she had taken down, she flagged for a privacy complaint or whatever. So I have a, um, I guess it's like a community guidelines violation. It's not a strike. I didn't get a strike on my channel, but they're, they wouldn't let me appeal it. So I've gotten these before or similar things that you can go appeal or whatever. But with the Eliza Blue privacy complaint, I, there's a, a thing that says like to appeal this click here, I click it and it says like that I'm not able to do it. So I was like, wow, she obviously has connections pretty high up at big tech if she's able to get people censored, not just off of Twitter, but on YouTube as well. Um, and I'd like to have my video restored, you know, so I guess that's it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's really nuts. I, my, I had like what four videos taken down for privacy claims and i think we've tried appealing with no success so it's frustrating i think some of us have had varying levels of success with getting our videos reinstated and it's just frustrating that that someone with a lot of power is allowed to sort of bend the rules of twitter because of who they know or who knows who they've blown who knows <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna go to Arthur Arthur Macy. Fuck, I'm never gonna say this right. Arthur Macya. Yes. Macya. Okay. Please introduce yourself to the lovely people and and how you got into following the story. Well, hi. I'm uh, 
Arthemisia or Arthemisia, however you want to pronounce it. I don't even know that I pronounce it half the time correctly. Uh, yeah, I, uh, well, I ended up actually following Eliza Blue simply because of the last uh, Tim Cast episode that he had her on uh, around Christmas time, I believe it was. And uh, yeah, I think it was January sixth or seventh. Oh, was it January sixth or seventh when he had her on? That was the so most recent time, but she she was on at least one or two more times before that. Okay, yeah, it was the most recent time that I uh, ended up being really suspicious of her, and I was going to end up actually doing a video just over her very first statement that she had made on TimCast. Uh, whenever she was, I found it weird because she had already gotten a hold of the Andrew Tate victims and whatnot. I was just suspicious immediately that of all people, they would find her that quickly because I didn't even really know who she was at all. And with how small of a following she actually turned out to have, it just was weird to me. And the weirdest thing about it was the very first quote she read, which was coming from a victim. She said in her own words, if this helps prevent people from becoming an alleged victim. And I was like, why would a victim ever mm. say that? That's weird. Uh, if I was a victim and I knew this happened to me, I'd be telling people, no, this happened to me, not allegedly happened to me or, you know, anybody else. So, yeah, I was going to there was a lot of different things in that statement in her statements, uh, things along the lines of I believe every single victim who comes to me and stuff like that. And I was I was getting these SJW vibes. I ended up not doing the video because I ended up kind of thinking, well, maybe I'm just being nitpicky and mean. And then the very next week, I would see Brittany Vinny, Brittany Venti was banned on Twitter. And that <laughs> that was weird to me because the first rumors I had heard was that Brittany shared some leaked screenshots of Eliza. That turned out to be completely untrue. It turned out to be from a music video, which was public. And, of course, was public for how long? A week? Up, uh, up to a week after she got banned? Yeah. Or something like that? Uh, yeah, so it was just – that's exactly how I started off with it. Pretty much exactly. <laughs> yeah, just being kind of suspect. And I, I rewatched that episode, the her last Timcast appearance, and the chat was on fire with skepti skepticism even then before any of this stuff came through with Brittany. Um, it's interesting to see the comments and people are going, yeah, because I agree with you. Like, why would you say I'm an alleged victim? Exactly. It was very, very suspicious to me when I saw that. I was like, that's just such weird language, because if I'm a victim, I'm a victim. I'm not an alleged victim. I don't think other people are going to be alleged victims. I think they would be victims. Um, so immediately it was raising alarm bells and I started following her and seeing where she was coming from and seeing trying to find her past work, which was also a big. Uh, how would I put it? Uh, a huge mess. I couldn't really find anything to be honest, any evidence that she had been doing anything for anybody. So yeah. it, it just kind of, just looking into her, everything wasn't, nothing was making sense about her. Yeah, I agree. Um, okay, Greg Hoyt, I definitely am familiar with you, Greg Hoyt. I think you've been on just about every Twitter space that I was in about this Eliza issue, but let people know who you are, a little bit about your background and how you got interested in following the story. Uh, yeah, my name's uh, Greg Hoyt. Um, I'm a recently unemployed journalist. I was working for uh, uh, Red Voice Media up until approximately January 30th. Uh, prior to that, I, I worked with Law Enforcement Today, uh, you know, pro-cop publication for a couple of years. Um, but uh, now I currently do the, the breakdown with Greg Hoyt on YouTube, which is going good. It's going good. Uh, that being said, uh, the, the way I got into this is, is actually kind of funny. I don't know if y'all are familiar with... Uh, one person who frequented the, the Twitter spaces, uh, this gal by the name of LG, at least that was that was the screen name she used on Twitter. Uh, I don't even remember how I started to follow Eliza Blue on Twitter initially, but nonetheless, I did. And I saw like one of LG's comments where she was demanding uh, uh, that Eliza Blue come on her podcast and like being really weird. And I was mm. completely oblivious to the growing suspicion around her at this time. And this probably would have been around the 24th, 25th of January, something like that. Uh, so I kind of clapped back at LG, like making fun of her. I'm like, yeah, you know, like I, I snarkily replied, like, that's really how you get somebody to come on your podcast, you know, bitch at them. Uh, but, you know, then LG kind of pressured me to look into this lady. And like, I'm an old school B-tard. So 
finding out information about people that they typically don't want found that's that's one of my specialties uh so when i started digging into this woman's background and finding all the stuff about you know eliza seep eliza knows eliza cuts all that stuff and seeing everything you know that encompassed the myspace and tumblr drama and then hearing a myriad of her contradictory statements based upon the, the recitations of her alleged trafficking experience because in some cases she says it started when she was 16 other cases she says it started when she was 17 then other cases it was when she was 18 the timelines were all over the place and that's that's really what just kind of piqued my interest you know and I, and I found it really intriguing that somebody could have this number of, 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 of instances where they just not just kind of like you know change their personality a bit but completely rebranded her entire persona, you know, going from the alt rock emo phase to, I, I don't even know what you would call that, like the uh, black scent girl from Chicago type of thing. <laughs> and then all of a sudden now she's like getting featured on, on you know, the freaking Epic Times and, and Daily Wire with, with a much more, uh, you know, uh, uh, just even the, her, the code switching was off the rails. It, it really blew my mind. And so that's that's really what got me into it. Yeah, it's it was very suspect to, to discover all her different personalities. And just from knowing a lot of people in the entertainment industry, I'm like, OK, I've never seen anybody with more than one stage name. And I'm like, this girl ha seemed to have a different last name every couple of years and with a completely different personality. So. Very suspect indeed. Let's go to uh, let's go to L or Lauren. I'm not sure what you prefer, but and I know Lauren, Lauren you, got, you got some new tea, some new info for us. I don't know if you want to share that now, and or just uh, take a couple minutes and explain to everybody who you are and how you got into this story. Well, I barely can contain myself right now. But uh -oh. I, <laughs> no, I'm saying like. <laughs> I was I was like messaging Frank. I was like I can't. I was like I got like I'm hurrying, but like I I was doing some like last minute kind of just putting together basically what we were doing right now, introducing ourselves and kind of talking about what we did. Because I honestly I call it kind of having like a touch of the tism. I don't really care <laughs> about a lot of drama. I I don't care. But uh, the, what drew me to this was uh, the constant rifts and kind of uh schisms and within the the community and or just you know like painting with a broad brush but like the just the kind of conservative or just even just people who are make sense most of the time uh area of the internet and it, it really started to bother me how many people were at each other's throats over eliza blue and i have my own uh personal example as i i went after uh i went after <laughs> uh Mersh from uh Ridge of the Sis because he was going after Eliza really early on when no one else was and I I like cheered him out on the internet like and so like I had to kind of realize that I was kind of falling for whatever it was and I don't like that and I don't like being you know misled and so I came into the whole digging thing late uh I went on to Kiwi Farms because that's what one does uh and and then just kind of started doing my own you know additional and kind of supplemental uh digging uh so I it's not something that necessarily would usually interest me but I kind of do this thing where once I sink my teeth into something I really can't let it go so here we are uh but so I don't. I I, I kind of just want to tell y'all if you if you if that's all right. And if, yeah. if this already is a thing, then I'm gonna feel really embarrassed. But I don't think it is because none of this had been archived yet, which is why I was sitting here like like frantically archiving stuff so that I can actually share this with y'all. So the the whole story, right? The whole the whole timeline of Eliza Blue. Uh, there there's kind of the is it's this I guess the second iteration of her trafficking that seems to be kind of the most up in the air sometime between like 2009 to 2012 ish give or take granted she was trying out for american idol and a lot of other things like it, if you know the full timeline you know and if you don't it's fine uh but like between like 2009 and 2012 ish she claims to have gotten you know fallen back into the life of, of being trafficked uh as one does i suppose uh <laughs> you know <laughs> she's like riding a bike i don't know traffic me once shame on you yeah 
Right. That's how the old saying goes. Kind of like that. Sorry, I'm like, I'm sorry. And so I'm going to be really embarrassed if this is already out there, but I don't think it is. So there, there's really not a whole lot of her on the internet. Uh, there's the My Chemical Romance phase, iconic, <laughs> you know. Uh, and then it kind of skips ahead to about like 20. 13, 14, where she's doing the life of the video vixen thing uh, that she did try out for American Idol. She was on like a like the blind date show in 2010. But there's not a whole lot of her as far as I have found and as far as I've seen people talk about. And again, if someone else has already talked about this, I'm very sorry. But I feel like Lewis and Clark, I'm rediscovering something that was already discovered. <laughs> uh, but so there's there's not a there's not really a footprint of her on the Internet uh, for that time. But I found it just now. Ooh. Like I found all of it and Ooh. it's live on Twitter right now. A, like a daily, like diary blog that she was doing at the time, uh, between July, 2010 through, uh, January of 2012. Is this and something I can pull up or you want to share? Yeah. Your screen? Yeah. Okay. yeah, no, totally. So, I can, I tend to over explain, uh, but so where I found this, just to, to take y'all down the rabbit hole just a little bit, but here, let me grab the link for you. I found this random WordPress blog from uh, like 2010. Oh, of this, I know of what you're talking about. talking about. This person talking about how she like was talking to Eliza Blue and talking about how Eliza was writing a great blog for Chicago Now. But this is not the same thing as her life as a video vixen thing. Eliza Blue, for the entire span that she claims to be traf trafficked, was a beauty blogger for Chicago Now. And her <laughs> blog, this is just like the, the it's from July 26, 2010, I suppose, which again is right in the middle of, you know, traffic land, I suppose. Um, but so this took me to Chicago now, which I'll drop the link to that right here. This is an archive from November 24th, 2009, where it gives her Eliza Sipe, which is what she was going by at the time, her, her, uh, biography. She says, I don't, I don't have to look as hot as I do in New York city or LA, which is her bio. That's her best thing about her, uh, she talks about living in Wicker Freaking Park, exclamation mark, you know, the place she was sleeping on the floor. And, and oh, to, yeah, so she doesn't get shot. She's like, I live in Wicker Mattress Freaking on the Park. floor years. Yes, yeah. she does hair at Floyd's Barbershop. Uh, you can find out where I'm going to be and how much it's going to cost you to hang. Oh, what? is that hair or is it something else? <laughs> right. So then... But it links yeah that's Twitter. not something you that's not language you use if you're just cutting hair how that's much is it gonna odd. be for you to hang <laughs> yeah all right no but it gets better hang on let me find this link now okay so she's been she writes a blog which the, this is an archive so of course the like web page is very broken so just uh sorry but so i started looking at what I could find that had been published from Chicago Now. This is an archive from January 24th, 2011, which is also smack dab in the middle of traffic land, right? Supposedly. Uh, if you scroll down on this, you can see different blogs she's been posting about the Golden Globes and makeup. It's like, it's a very broken website. Don't get me wrong, because it's, it's like a, an old archive. But It Girl, Hair Crushes on Alexa Chung and Blake Lively. She's like writing about hair and makeup like every single day oh. for Chicago now. And so then down at the bottom. Is there something on this specifically that I should click on? Well, I'll send that to you next. Okay. Or you can see down at the bottom it says follow Pretty Cheap, which is her name of her then blog. <laughs> Pretty Cheap blog on Twitter. <laughs> also, twitter.com forward slash Eliza Sipe. Facebook.com forward slash Am Eliza Sipe. So if okay. you go um, to Twitter, it's way down at the bottom. But if you go to twitter.com right now live, twitter.com forward slash Pretty Cheap blog, all one word, you will find the full live, like, day-to-day -day beauty blogging lifestyle of Eliza site from early 2010 all the way through 2012, mm. okay. which is when she was in the middle of being trafficked. I can't, I guess I've, I'm having trouble finding what on this Chicago now uh, Here you go. was her blog. Okay. There's your link right there. I think like, it's, it's kind of broken up. I realize it's, it's okay. it, you kind of got to navigate. So 
uh, but just go to turning. this go to this Twitter link right now. And I again, I was like frantically archiving this. This is Eliza wow. Blue's old blog where it's beauty blogger and licensed cosmetologist. It links back to her Chicago Now blog forward slash pretty cheap, which links to her Eliza site profile that I just showed you where she talks about not being cheap to hang out with at Floyd's Barbershop. Hmm. But this is this is what it's like a day to day of what she was doing for that entire time. Wow. So I find it very suspect, in fact, that she had the time to write a weekly column for Chicago <laughs> Now about makeup that no one was reading. Well, she right. did claim she did claim that sex trafficking victims can have a full life in addition well, to being trafficked. Really sure they can multitask yeah sure. but she's got a platform right there i mean if she wanted to blast these people and get away from them true she's got a platform you know and she's, she's i guess apparently knows journalists that i suppose like the way that she defends herself there's really nothing that she she could spin this all she wants to but this like very she talks about living in wicker freaking park exclamation point which is where she claims she was sleeping on the floor she didn't want to get shot because she's just like being trafficked or whatever which she's wow. like talking about it on her chicago now profile wow. i i don't know no so, this, this is, is good this is good this l is, because it's it's it shows that she was i don't so, know mostly just having a normal life that during this time yeah. Yeah. And again, sure, I suppose she could also be getting trafficked while having a weekly beauty blog for Chicago now. I suppose. I find it unlikely. Yeah. And, and every, every place she's been, I mean, every year that she claims to have been trafficked, she also at the same time had a public platform that she could speak out on. And she could certainly, very familiar with the internet, could definitely let people know what's going on with her, you know. But that's the thing is like she doesn't mention being trafficked or, or even like not that I've seen doing Nothing. anything against her will in any of her blogs. Well, and so to take this to a just like a, a touch of the tism a little bit further, which is this isn't a spreadsheet, but I went through and pulled all of the mentions of her old Twitter at, which was at forward slash Eliza Sipe, which of course it's gone now. But you can still find old retweets of her from back in the day. Uh where because it's like old retweets on twitter it was just like the full text you know like it, it was weird uh so i went through and like found who she was hanging out with and what she was doing and wow. like she's like doing like bar promotions and, like it's it's a very weird timeline i'm still putting it together because <laughs> i found this literally like five minutes before i was supposed to get in the shower but like this is i think kind of it it her. is pretty exciting yeah it it definitely shows that she, she always cover all her bases yeah, she could have spoken out. She didn't mention anything anywhere about being trafficked. It was always pushing some, you know, I don't want to say some grift. She could have been genuinely <laughs> a barber or, you know, cutting hair or a beauty. Right. It seemed like she just always had something going on. She was also still very active on her MySpace, <laughs> which, by the way, I found, which is really funny how do you find uh, an old mice I, I can't believe my girl it's hard even. but it's like it's i can i can which which I myspace can. did you find because I, I found like the old official one that she just shut it down were there other ones Eliza that she cuts had? only yeah. real myspace forward slash blog that one i mean that's that's not like terribly hard to find but she was active in writing blogs i went through the archives of those she was like again blogging on her myspace from 2011 to 2013 right in the middle of that like questionable time again of course there's going to be a way out a way to explain her way out of this i really just kind of want to find out the truth i don't feel like this has a leg to stand on when she's talking about where she lit like i don't know you know she could a lot of suffering. holes a lot of holes story. and this yeah. is again this is i found this like five minutes before this show started so it's i'm gonna keep that's definitely exciting. Being autistic about it, so there. <laughs> no, that you know what we could we wouldn't be here without autism. So it's true. All right, so I'm, I'm done with my shout right. out to autism. Also, hi uh, Radix. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, but strong. not leastly, uh, we have TBYS. Think before you sleep, also known as Sean. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into covering this story. 
Oh crap! It's like my turn to talk now. It's your turn. <laughs> Everybody's like so professional. Um, I don't know. I got a message. I said uh, from Brittany. I said, "Hey, you should probably tell everybody about this." And that's when a lot of things started. Um, I think everybody's already pretty summer, pretty much summarized everything. I just want to see where it all goes. Like I'm watching this like a basically like a, one of those movies that doesn't reveal everything until like the end or just like slowly starts throwing things out. And I really want to know how she's getting so many people to defend her. That's kind of the mystery here is like, why aren't people just running from this like crazy? Um, so, and, and also the, the other entertaining part to me is like how people who are obviously not dedicated enough to build the talent to be successful in entertainment still kind of make it. There are a lot of people who are have way more success than, the, than they should. And Eliza seems to be one of them. I'm kind of curious on, on how the, the grift for that works. So again, I'm just watching it like a movie. <laughs> Yeah, that's a really good point. And uh, I guess the internet is full of people in Hollywood, uh, full of people who are like, huh, how did they get famous? What's like, what's all that? What's so special about them? But it yeah, just one of the like one of the big ones I crap on is like Lily Singh. She obviously is not a good comedian at all, but she's got like 15 million subscribers. She has her own TV show. She has all these ends with celebrities. It's like, yeah, they, they tried her out for a late night show. Uh, it was called Up Late or Extra Late or too oh, late, late, late Lily Singh sing or something Lily like sing. that. Yeah, a little late with Lily Singh, and it and it was it actually made a list for like worst or least watched TV shows of all time. <laughs> yeah, it was one of those diversity hire shows. But I also want to like along with no, wanting to know like why Eliza's getting so much support. She probably just has some blackmail. I mean, she's obviously a sex worker and yeah. probably just slept with some people and says, "I'll reveal this if you um, don't cover for me." Yeah, she seems like kind of like a, you know, former escort who is now past her prime and is an older lady. And um, she kind of seems to me somebody that was like a groupie, I guess, and just kind of like wormed her way onto places. How did she get on Blind Date? How did she get on American Idol? I mean, there's tons of oh, those are pretty try. easy. You just apply. Really? OK, yeah, I mean, for Blind yeah. Date, they're probably looking for extras all the time and stuff like that. You probably just go through cast or what are those like? Um, yeah. you, you do a big or, casting or, um, call. You you do like central a big, casting like, and stuff okay. like that. Yeah, cattle call. Yeah, I did America's it's, it's Got Talent. You just, but you I wonder, like, would I don't know? Was she? Does she like? Did she recruit people? Did she bring other girls to these like escort services, or did she find underage people for Jeffrey Star? I don't know. Just ask. Well, me. yeah. Maybe. I mean, she From talked who? about it in her video Vixen blog about right. acquiring women for like shoots and stuff. Granted, that's not quite the same, but yeah, there's a, there's a lot of, you know, maybe I'm crazy or maybe it's slightly coded language. I don't know. And yeah, it, that it, was her, her friend Carly Wenzel, who I spoke to uh, before she spoke with the Daily Beast and she was featured in that article that Eliza actually offered her $500 one day to like go hang out with some men or go, you know, go hang out with them or go in the hot tub or go be with them and, and do whatever for $500. And, it, and at this point she, she said no, because she was like married and had a baby. And it was like, <laughs> I mean, thank God, you know, at the, at the time she was, was shocked and, just kind of scandalized by it but you know making this offer to her like it was no big deal and bragging to carly about how much money she was making so she didn't it didn't seem like eliza was shy about doing this or this time in her right. life yeah and you know what her motivations were and like this is the person who is presenting themselves as a uh, advocate for trafficking victims and then encouraging those people to reach out to her which i find very suspicious you know um and kind of weird <laughs> yeah. i don't know you if know, she's like just... a like a mastermind though she seems to make a lot of very very bad criminal mistakes like not yeah. deleting her entire internet history uh before all this came out because it's pretty easy to find that she wasn't trafficked just by looking at old videos and stuff like that i mean it's weird that she has all this power to take this stuff down now why wasn't it taken down two years ago when she started the grift yeah it seems like that would have been pretty easy especially just taking down the most uh offensive stuff which is just the rap videos that she got taken down within a week like it's yeah. really stupid to not have done that before you started the the sex trafficking grip because covid oh. came up and you lost your job or something totally and i'm gonna play well, devil's advocate like for that. a second because I, I i see some you know i'll see comments like this in the chat like carly you guys believe everyone and it's like why do you guys think somebody would 
I, I don't know. Is it possible that somebody could lie and say they were friends with Eliza for a couple of decades and like create this whole story? I guess it's I guess it's possible. I just don't think that it's probable. And I guess I want to know what you guys say to someone who goes, you know, the the people who believe her who go, no, you know, I, I believe her. She was something happened to her. She was abused. You know, Shane mentioned that, he, you know, sh actually, first of all, Eliza gave Shane the name of the trafficker. Shane, I guess, saw the, the the emergency room bill. He There was a rape kit. You know, all these things add up to something definitely happened to you. So what do you guys say to the people who... You know, well, I'm, use those as that like those things as proof that this actually happened. I'm sure people who are sex workers have bad things happen to them, you know, especially people who are using drugs and going to parties and hanging out with people who are questionable. Yeah, I'm sure bad things happen to you. You know, it's. Yeah, it's interesting how that that That's Shane was told a name, but none of us were told a name and probably well, because that yeah. person could sue the crap out of her for lying because she's obviously lying. I mean, if you're going on, you know, platforms that are pretty big, like the what did, did you guys say the Daily Wire and then the Epic Times, you're having these places feature you at that point. Like, why? Why can't you name the the so-called abusers? Like, aren't you? allowing them to continue to potentially harm other people by protecting them and not naming them. Pretty you know, much. it reminds me of Milo Yiannopoulos when he went on Joe Rogan and said that he saw these uh, very young boys, those were his words, very young boys being drugged and essayed at Hollywood style boat parties, you know, wow. of people like Brian Singer. He said Brian Singer wasn't one of them, but he said he observed this stuff happening and he refused to name those people because he didn't want to be indiscreet. And Milo is another one who bragged about having a blackmail vault on everybody he's ever interacted with in uh, wow. right wing media or whatever. You yeah, know? a lot of stuff has come out about him. Yeah, right. Pretty much right. everybody I talk to uh, privately says don't ever trust Milo with anything. No, but it's like, is there something similar going on with Eliza? Like, why won't you name these people? Is she not wanting to be indiscreet? Does she have a blackmail vault on people? I don't know. I'm just asking questions. Probably. I mean, it'd be pretty easy yeah, as a sex worker. Think... Yeah, right. Yeah, I don't I don't think that she has, like, you know, a lot of dirt on people. My, my suspicion is that, you know, she's just slinging utter nonsense, just complete. She, she's a, a snake oil salesman. She, she's a bullshit artist. So, uh, I mean, like with as vague of the details that she's provided with respect to her alleged trafficking experience, the one that transpired sometime in 97 or 98 or 99, and the other one that transpired between a few years, who knows, uh, I could make up a story as vague as that and, you know, probably sell it convincingly. <laughs> so, well, yeah, but the, the issue the is point. not the story. The issue is like, why are so many people setting their careers on fire to defend her? Hmm. Um, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't do all this work on YouTube to, to set it on fire to defend an obvious liar. It's so a very it's like, emotionally charged topic, too. Like people, like I, I mean, because yeah. like I caught myself going after someone that like I respect and just I didn't do my homework and I was like chewing them out for going after her like early on, like around Christmas. So is that Mersh you meant? Yeah, like I yeah. I got on to Mersh for that, which was really stupid on my part. Like, and it's because it's an emotionally well, he's topic. abrasive. I well, you know he's sure. an easy person to hate right away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he didn't deserve it. Like mm. flat out, he's abrasive, but he didn't deserve it. And like it was, I was coming to like a knee jerk kind of support of Eliza at the time because I was like, like, how dare yeah, you? I, I was like, it's, too. It's very I, easy to feel that like indignant rage about it. I, like, I told people, oh, you're just you're just chasing her for a clout, like because mm -hmm. I just didn't. They weren't putting it together in a way that I could see. It just wasn't obvious to me that she was lying about everything, yeah. and I wasn't looking into it. It's strange closely. how everybody else is emotional about this, but Eliza's totally not. Like if you've listened to lots of people who are victims of some some pretty horrible things. They get emotional. They have trouble speaking. They're, they're voice stammers. She is like, mm. when, when she gets asked about her story, she laughs. Like, I've never seen a victim of actual trauma do that. <laughs> and I've listened to a ton of them. People do. I mean, people respond to trauma in different ways. Like, it's not, it, maybe it's atypical, but that's not necessarily, you know, I'm, granted, I'm, I'm terrible at reading body language, so I don't know. But, like, <laughs> I, I don't no, I for real am. But like it's, she kind of it's like she kind of continues to catch lightning in a bottle. And I, I think that honestly, 
even now, like I've learned more like tricks for digging in the last year or so with like scraping and archiving massive like amounts of data very quickly that was kind of outside of my ability a year ago. And I think that people kind of think that, well, all right, well, I've changed my screen name. I've deleted that Twitter account. Like, you know, well, what's the likelihood of people really wanting to like go look through the old breadcrumbs, but here we are. So there. Yeah. And I think most people wouldn't have had the desire to go digging and, and looking through the breadcrumbs if she had put a little bit more thought uh, and a little bit more work into her story. If she had cleaned up her own internet a little bit more and if she hadn't been reacting to people the way she had been, if she hadn't uh, snapped at Katie Herzog, if she wasn't squirrely on the last Tim cast appearance and then, you know, she read the statement from the survivors but wouldn't take any questions at all like she very much has to be in control uh she doesn't like any surprise questions yeah that's you know, that's someone who's a liar but you could you could make the argument <laughs> though devil's avocado you could make the argument that that's a trauma response which is the kind of stuff that she does How which is very um, right. it's very yeah. emotionally manipulative and convenient and yeah. like but you, usually when there's a trauma response you see emotion or affect with the trauma otherwise they're probably a liar I mean, it's, I mean, I get it's, it's that. so rare to get a non-emotional yeah. response about that. I'm saying and, and that it's such an emotionally like, charged topic that people she's like crying on Tim Cast. Sure. Or actually, uh, yeah, I'd like to circle back or to fake uh, crying on Tim Cast. All right, Jen. I'd like to, uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, no, no, I'd no. like to kind of circle back around to the uh, apparent hard evidence on it. Uh, and people I've kind of been seeing use that argument, too, about the rape kit. This proves that she was definitely assaulted at the time, right? But it wasn't enough to prove that the said person did it. I mean, that's what bothers me more than anything. Apparently, her parents, as it said in the article, uh, Shane Cashman's second article, that there was a rape kit that was performed, and it proved that there was a sexual assault that had taken place. And they didn't call the police or do anything. They didn't name yeah, the that's guy. Not, they that's, that's, um, that's not um, and, and And with that uh, rape kit, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Al. I don't think I don't think that's necessarily altogether uncommon. Yeah, well, I women mean, often don't report their rapes. I'm that's, not saying yeah. that it would have proven anything per se, but it's just weird to me that they were like, "We're just going to hang on to this as the parents of Eliza because the yeah, victim why might not." A parent, like, why wouldn't you be irate? Like, why would exactly a dad yeah. be like, "Oh my god, somebody did what to my daughter?" Like, see I'd you in pissed. a week. Don't ask me where I am. You know, like, exactly. I just don't know what kind of. And it's like, you know, I, maybe I can't judge yet because I'm not a parent myself, but I just don't understand how you could I let... Am, there would have been no police involved. I know. I would have <laughs> drove right to his house. Why would you <laughs> let your yeah. daughter well, go back to the... You know what I mean? Like, why, like when you yeah. finally get them back and the whole... I was unrecognizable. I had black hair. Uh, you know, everything. Like, what parent would let their daughter go back to, what, get a car? To get some stuff? Like, you're telling me you can't you can't nix that apartment uh, remotely? Like, or you can't send somebody... I, mean, I don't know. Even if it's a brand new car, I would be like, yeah, I just, I'm lucky to get out with my life. Like, I'm good. Like, I'll find another... Oh, yeah, and she said that a car. bunch of times. Like, I was lucky to survive. I, I was at, at death's door every every five seconds from her story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if it was really that dangerous, she wouldn't be doing a lot of the stuff that she's doing. Just as yeah. a parent in general, I never would have allowed that to happen. I would have went myself and got her stuff back. She would have stayed yeah. home. I would have had a friend with me. We would have went and got everything ourselves. Yeah. It would have been a simple, you're never going back there again. We're getting this fixed. Uh, realistically, I would have taken all the evidence to the police. I would have done all this myself. And if she was like, please don't, I'd have been like, tough. Uh, yeah. No, I'm getting this taken care of. That's as that's exactly what I would have done as a parent. Um, I wouldn't let my child tell me or convince me to not do something at that um, point. And we even have the affect response from her mom when she made that call of like, oh, hey, I'm in these music videos. And her mom's like, well, I don't really care. Like, if, if you were a trafficking <laughs> no, victim previously, like I would, and I was your parent, I would have like, flipped her, the, I would have flipped the F out. She didn't say that she didn't care. She said that she, like, she was worried that Eliza was becoming too obsessed with fame and money and, like, yeah. notoriety. She 100% didn't say, I don't care. 
Well, I, I don't in think terms he didn't of care. like, I like mean, she, her mother's response was not one of someone who seemed very worried that her daughter was in, in extreme danger and sure. very much hanging out with the wrong crew and like very, very concerned. You know, she's just like, oh, Eliza's going to she's a wild one. She's going to do her thing. <laughs> Nobody can stop her. That was kind of her tone. Um, it, it was different than if someone's like, oh, don't go back there. Like you almost lost your life. I mean, I think what was like most concerning to me about the whole situation with Eliza Blue was just like the way that it was being handled um, on these big tech platforms like Twitter when they put forward this thing about non-consensual images. I was like, wow, okay, so look at that uh, in relation to like the Jeffrey Epstein thing. You know, a lot of people that were researching his um, trafficking ring were putting pictures of all these people together like there's the picture of virginia jeffrey with prince andrew which he contests but was super important for her case and for people seeing you know the evidence of this what if he said that was a non-consensual image and wanted it removed off of all these platforms like could he hmm. get away with that because eliza got away with it it just seemed really strange to me like what does that mean non-consensual image the image Brittany posted was a screenshot from a publicly available video that was not age restricted and had been out for a long time. So I don't know. I thought that that the implications of that were concerning. Yeah, it's that's a concerning precedent. Like, can anybody just take it's almost like it reminds me of when someone says, oh, that's fake news or like, oh, when you hear Klaus Schwab, like, oh, we need to fight uh, misinformation and disinformation. I feel like this non-consensual image shit is like a gateway into we're creating language around taking something back that makes us look bad or or like the truth comes out and we don't like it. And right. Or like a privacy say. complaint to get a YouTube video removed. What if Jeffrey Epstein's co-conspirators just start reaching out and hitting all the channels that have researched his trafficking ring? People like Leslie West. Wexner, you know, or the Dubins or whoever. Um, I just didn't like that. I thought that was concerning. And it's like, you're supposed to be an advocate for uh, against trafficking, but you are contributing to an abuse of a system that could benefit uh, perpetrators of abuse and trafficking. You know, they could kind of take down videos that expose them using the same abusive process that she seems to have weaponized to remove all this stuff that is critical of her. Right. And every step of the way, she has been when she started to feel threatened uh, and she got defensive and she started like speaking in like lawyer terms, you know, she wasn't like, oh, my God, I th that was a really tr like traumatizing part of my life. I, you know, I also did music videos like I just please don't share them. But instead, she gets litigious. She gets kind of shitty. She starts. Blo I mean, at this point. All I mean, all of us are probably blocked. I think she recently did a blockchain. I'm seeing a lot of posts from people like, wow, I've never interacted with Eliza. Wow, I've never even uh, tagged her or anything. And now I'm blocked. So I wonder if this is part of her. You know, she's thinking about her next personality and she's just good at what, blo what blocking thousands of people. Anybody who would know the old her. I don't know. I don't I'm know not blocked. For no, now. Yeah, I'm nope. Not. I'm not blocked. No, I'm not either. Wow. Shocking. Okay. I even tagged her in a bunch yeah, of posts. I even on on some of her, uh, like on some of her posts from like the past week and a half when she started going on like that uh, schizo posting spree, you know, where she was like, you know, just posting <laughs> all kinds of weird stuff. And, and like I was, I was dropping some memes on there. I, I thought they would have, I thought they would have got me blocked, but she still hasn't done it yet. And I don't know if you guys noticed, she's back on Twitter again, doing that schizo posting stuff. Like uh, 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 like slapping memes of raccoons and stuff like that. Like every day is trash oh, day no, or something. Oh really? Like she's, she's, she's doing, doing like really the, weird. The, the paid advertisements things that you see on Facebook. She's got like a picture of Sylvester Stallone and somebody who I don't recognize. <laughs> oh she's, like, God, just yeah, that old animal crap. Lady. Oh wow. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna pull up. Let's yeah. Let's go. Let's see what's going on on her Twitter. She shut up for a few days. That's pretty yeah. smart. It's probably one of the smartest things she's done. <laughs> like really live it's, every it's day like it's trash day. so she's just pretending everything's fine <laughs> <laughs> nothing to see here if she Stunning. shut up for like just... four months everybody would forget what? about this <laughs> every day trash day for her oh my god ironically it's my spirit animal there's no coming back from what you've done there are always second chances all right that's positive <laughs> Not when you uh, use uh, and claim to be trafficked. Just popular abuse is so Oof. awful in all forms. Who is this person? Uh, harmful to actual survivors. 
And that's the thing. It's, it's actually harmful to sex workers and escorts because a lot of women do that job and they don't feel like, you know, they, they, they have the, you know, they can handle it, whatever. They don't have any kind of soul trauma. Uh, and it's almost like, well, uh, you can at any time claim to be, it, it's almost like, yeah, you got into this job knowing the dangers and uh, and the risks, and it's almost like, well, at any time you can just say you've been trafficked and create a whole narrative. And, yeah, it's uh, bad. Um, I was watching, I think, two different videos of actual trafficking victims, and the second they said, "I'm a sex trafficking survivor," my eyes just rolled. I was like, "Oh, like Eliza," like I mean, without even me thinking about it. And their their stories were actual real stories. My daughter was sexually trafficked because she was addicted to drugs. I know they don't stay silent. Stop giving her away out. She's done nothing but hurt survivors with her lies at her grift. Yeah, I have been seeing a lot of comments, people coming out yeah. saying, well, this happened to my daughter or this happened to me. And this is not typically what you see. But now we got to support her. Eliza, I just want to say, I believe you. I support you. I was also a victim in many ways, in many ways. <laughs> uh, but I'm taking my power back from my abuser and starting my own only fans soon what what's advice dm me I, if you want to collab oh my god is she asking her to collab because she's pretty cheap <laughs> oh my word but up <laughs> let's go to some of the comments here from scrotes mcgoats thank you scrotes most people are too scared to question people who claim to have suffered trauma like being trafficked for sex and some people are even more scared to admit they were scammed yep dude that 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 is the tim pool uh mvp right there that's the guy that yep. got tim pool to blow up hats off <laughs> scrotes mcgoats dude Scrotes McGoats is chat royalty. Yeah, it's an honor, sir. <laughs> Thank you for your service. <laughs> Thank you for your service. He's in a very <laughs> unique club with Dr. Dick and Balls as uh, basically people in the chat who have <laughs> it's a good name. started uh, <laughs> something that kind of an epic event. Butthole. Wow, another great name. Butthole <laughs> Surfer. The Damn. only reason TBYS, a.k.a. Sean, cares about the whole Eliza Blue situation is because he's dating Brittany Venti. Oh my god! About. Is that the <laughs> only <laughs> reason you care? What a horrid accusation. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> I disavow. Hey, I mean, who's who knows? Would I, would I care about this as much as I do if Brittany wasn't one of my very good friends? Like, I, I probably wouldn't have been on it as early as I was. I mean, certainly if it wasn't a current event, it would have been a video of mine. I mean, it's yeah. too easy. Yeah. Uh, most people should care about censorship. Grifty, congrats to all y'all for this opportunity. And thanks, Chrissy, for still fighting for hashtag free Britney Venti. It does feel hopeless. I'm not going to lie. Like, I don't know what else to do at this point. You might just have yeah. to wait. I, I think that's all we can do is wait. There's really not a whole lot coming out at the moment things are kind of going silent about it we just got to keep a good eye on the situation and not lose focus i think because there's so many different directions people are trying to take this and it needs to not go anywhere other than censorship this whole thing has only been right. about censorship and that's the most important thing to be honest and like i said i've been seeing a lot of different directions going everywhere about different scandals and just a pr firm was the best they could come up with the bot, we're all bots. Yeah, the, well, yeah, it's shadow box. box. <laughs> it's right. just garbage. Complete you can, garbage. The you can tell if, uh, certainly something that would blow this up again is if she went to that Minds event and then she got questioned about certain things and continued to grip off oh, of it. Yeah. If she is actually she, shows up to it. There's do we no know? She's is she said Speaking she's of which, go. this might be a good time to unveil. Wow, I have a new shirt available. Uh, let me take time. I'm going to take time to grift for myself right here. <laughs> On flagrantriggers.com, <laughs> we have just unveiled today a digital cannibal shirt. Wow. <laughs> Get yours today. Nice. Awesome. Digital cannibal. Um this is this is the official shirt of the PR bots of the Eliza Blue censorship controversy. Get yours today in black, gray, green, navy, white. If you're not prone to spilling, digital cannibals, baby. That's who we are. <laughs> Apparently. Well, or if you are prone to spilling, we don't judge, right? 
it's yeah, true. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Still away. Uh, Mark Zart, thanks for the super chat. Brittany did nothing wrong. All she did was ask a question. Her account needs to be unlocked. Eliza has done immense harm to real victims of trafficking because no one will believe them now. And here's the thing. Even, again, playing total devil's advocate, let's say Eliza really is a sex trafficking victim. Well, there's no way she should ever become a public person. Uh, she should never have become the face of this thing because she can't get her story straight. She she doesn't appear trustworthy. She has a very questionable background, a lot of holes. Like she's the last person that should be the face of a cause. Yeah, I'm sorry, but her statement, like she did that. Um, it was like a little thread she made where she said, like, I am updating my victim story. Like you all have trafficked me now it's called imaged based internet trafficking so or whatever. It's like what yeah it, it, what? Sim. and then Image it sounded really close to ibs crazy. which is funny oh yeah ibs <laughs> irritable, irritable sexually trafficked syndrome <laughs> right her uh pro pedo comments also when she was talking about this bizarre uh libertarian like utopian future where uh, members of the community could like vote and decide which adult gets to have sex with the child like oh are they employed and have we yep. decided that they're they're not going to traumatize the child and it's like what are you that talking won't cause about? trafficking what at all saying and then <laughs> that she's was so like, bad do i think that some children are capable of having sex with adults yes and it's like what in what context is that an acceptable thing to say? It's shit's yeah. nuts. Again, if you're a public, if you're trying to be the poster girl for something, you don't go on a on a podcast and and do a hypothet hypothetical rant about your utopia where where children and adults like what would have to happen so that children can have sex with adults? Like, don't even go there. Don't even go there. Like, why would you say that? Yeah, uh, I mean, it's the same problem with like the woke stuff. They never think like, what would happen if some really evil person abused the system? And what she's suggesting would just lead to sex trafficking of children, like immediately. Uh, Probably wouldn't even take that long, especially if she's like, oh, my neighbor with different culture could be with a twelve-year-old when oh, he's forty-five. So if that's their, weird. if that's their cultural values, like, okay, well then you're saying sex trafficking is going to happen. So you're actually promoting sex trafficking with these values. It's not good. Uh, Matthew Hammond, thanks for the super chat. L is not just a pretty face or is limited to talking about this Eliza lady. Big dig energy is real. And it Please seems that she is here. now doing it without Red Bull. Wow. We have a Aww, real Lauren so Simp cute. in the chat here. <laughs> Listen. Morning Simp cast. Wow. This is a morning <laughs> Simp cast. Yeah. I don't usually come out in the daytime, so. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I did. I did quit Red Bull. I'm drinking root beer, which is terrible. So. Oh no, yeah. you're not a coffee but person. It's better for you, though. I guess. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Fair. Um, but no. Oh, wow. I, I, yeah, a lot of people uh, are concerned about your Red Bull. No, uh, it's kind of a problem. <laughs> uh, I have a I have a caffeine addiction that I am oh. weaning my way off of. Uh, it's, it's, it's rather bad and very expensive. Uh, so it's kind of a, it's kind of a thing that's been going on in, in Lauren land. I then no, I just, I'm just, sorry. I was just kind of listening to everyone talk. I'm like, I don't have a whole lot to say. Oh, I right. well, I'm trying to caffeine pass. I drink a white mocha every morning from like my favorite coffee place and it was so hard to try to do the caffeine fast that's that's Ooh. like legit why you know, i would never you know, even attempt that yeah i know i did it for a couple days and then i had like my friends were like yeah we're doing it in solidarity with you and i was like okay mm, i'm not it. gonna tell you guys i fucked up <laughs> i'm back to drinking I'm not doing it anymore focus. I honestly thought you were going to start trying to do a coffee brand coffee commercial. I was like, holy cow. I was thinking about I it. I was, <laughs> I mean, he is on, ordering his on vacation still. Yeah. I can't say it's delicious, though. 100%. Yeah, it's it's definitely my favorite coffee. Just completely <laughs> show for that. Try, a, try <laughs> coffee the brand coffee. Try the Eliza Blue Blend, which it changes flavors every couple of years or so. And <laughs> how you track of. Oh, it's no. pretty cheap, too. <laughs> Oh God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, Matthew Hammond thinks the super chat. Eliza proves the internet is forever and nothing is completely deleted. Archive everything. Yeah, I, uh, I'm i kind of a newbie at the archiving and the Wayback Machine. I'm learning. 
And then get a Dropbox so you can share it with your friends. It is kind of terrifying, though, too, in a way, like my daughter is going to be 10 next month. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, you know, just trying to keep kids like off the Internet. You know, when I was growing up, thank God, like we didn't have all this social media stuff because I can only imagine the crazy stuff I would have put out there. Like, yeah, I, I didn't have a cell phone until I was 17 and I could like afford to buy the phone and pay the bill myself. And it was right. one of those little Nokia things where you had to press the button like three times to do oh, a text wow. the brick ever yeah didn't get the internet and so i just feel like oh my gosh with these the younger kids like my daughter's homeschooled but even still like she still goes to co-ops and stuff with with other like christian homeschoolers and they're still exposed to stuff you know and uh it's just crazy i I feel bad for the next year. Yeah, I was a, I held out till I was a junior in college and I didn't <laughs> only reason I got was because I had an internship in New York City and I uh, my mom was like she said she's like if you're being raped I want you to let me know. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I think she was kidding when she said that, but um yeah, it was a, it was the, like the small Supportive. little flippy phone. It was like a I think it was a Verizon brand like little small silver flip phone and same thing yeah you had to push the button three times to get a letter and i just think like yeah the the longer you can wait on giving your kid a cell phone the better and it's like if you can get to 18 without posting a nude of you on the internet i think you've won oh god As yeah a, the, i mean imagine yeah. what kids are doing they're, they're probably oh, sharing child pornography sad. themselves all the time it's yeah yeah it's really sad there's a lot of crazy stuff that happens in these discord servers and then and then imagine kids. like the person who's not as good who just keeps that image forever yeah or the groomers that come in there and like take advantage of these young kids oh yeah that's yeah true. it's better i mean i had an ex-boyfriend who like years after we broke up would still send me photos of myself and i'd be like ew you oh, saved these so like weird. it's so icky don't save your news well, yeah guys. i can't move I can't on with your lives yeah. oh sorry sorry what were you saying greg Oh yeah, no. Uh, I can't. I can't understand why parents would give you know uh, uh, their children, especially teenage children, cell phones. You know, like I'm not like super duper conservative, and you know, I'm I'm not like one of those like helicopter parent type of individuals. But I think it is absolutely insane to give your child a device that leaves direct conduit to the child and leaves the parent out of the equation to screen who is trying to contact them. Because, you know, you remember back in the day, you had the rotary phone in the kitchen or something like that. Somebody tried to get a hold of somebody in the house, one of the kids in the house. They had to talk to mom or dad first, who answered the phone. It's like, oh, who's calling? Let me hand them the phone. <laughs> and then your parents literally had to watch you on the phone, and it's, like, really weird or uncomfortable. Um, I, I just, I find it peak insanity when I see kids with cell phones. I'm like, there, there's no way in hell I would do that. Yeah. Yeah, I remember Absolutely. the old corded phones, you know, dragging it off to my room and like. <laughs> and then you could listen in from the other line, so you're always yeah. like oh. being spied on. Yeah, I would hear a little click. I'd hear my mom picking up on another phone in the house just to like quietly listen. Yeah, of course. Uh, I always remember, remember messing with my old, sister. Like, the old AOL chat rooms and stuff. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. That was one thing I button. did unmonitored as a 12 year old child. We did have the weird AOL chat rooms and stuff. But I don't think you could share images. It was on Neopets AOL chat. for me. Oh. Someone else on Neopets? Was yeah. that uh, my was aging? That oh, it was, oh no, my it was no. It's hard to explain, but it's just a website where you take care of a little digital pet. Oh. <laughs> but there was like a chat board. Uh, that are guy online. I fundamentally disagree with what y'all are saying. Although I don't have kids, I think that if you kind of create that sort of like, cause, because kids are going to know that you're that you're keeping them from something and, and they're going to want to seek those things out. I think, granted, I don't have kids, so I don't have a dog in this race, but I think that it would probably be better to let your kid know that they can always come to you and talk to you about things that they're uncertain about or that make them uncomfortable and let them know that, like, no matter what it is, they can always come to you. Because kids who think that you're going to get mad at them if they if you catch them, like, on the internet or whatever, are just going to get better at hiding stuff. I think that's True. a really, really bad way to go about it. Again, yeah, I have a cat, balance with it. So, there's, you know, like, there's, there's got to be a balance there, especially a teenager. Like, I mean, like, I know yeah. teenagers are dumb. We've all been one. But, like, at the same time, like, 
they're, they're, they should always know that they can come to you and otherwise they're going to just hide stuff. Anyways, that's my thought. I don't have kids, so I don't know. Yeah, I think it depends on the age, you know, what age they sure. are and when it is okay to like start talking to them about certain things. Um, hmm. My daughter's super innocent, so I'm very lucky. Like she doesn't really know to ask about anything and I haven't had to have any like serious talks yet. Like we've done the stranger dangerous stuff, but she's pretty pretty good you know which is why it's young, though. like i'm terrified about her don't becoming have kids a shut the fuck up oh i can have an opinion even if i don't have a kid i don't give a fuck holy shit that's brutal <laughs> which is why it's kind Aww. of amazing that eliza was able to be groomed like pre all this internet stuff like pre i mean that it's just why it's it seems pretty far fetched. Like, what was the photographer like calling her house, sending her letters? Like, I don't know. Well, she moved out to LA and she immediately started doing ice, is what she said. Uh, she's like, within two hours, I was hooked up. Oh, I believe that. Yes. I mean, that's in my welcome basket. <laughs> sure. Right. Yeah. I mean, California is a great place for that, by the way. It's pretty well known for that. I lived Scrooge in San Francisco for about a year. I hated it. <laughs> Thank you, Scrooge, for the super chat. In Tim May's case, it's probably due to their Tim Cast connection with her, despite his uh, prostate. What? Protestations. Protestations <laughs> during his meltdown. Yeah, I don't know. I felt like he was pressured to not cover it from his audience. And then I feel like the people around him sort of swayed him to thinking it was just drama and not a real censorship story. I think that he was heavily influenced by those around him to not take it seriously. The Tim sometimes like a super villain will tell you exactly what he's doing before he does it. Like with the Jack Murphy thing, he's like, you know what the best thing to do with media is to just not talk about anything and people will eventually forget about it. And then he just did that with the Jack Murphy thing. <laughs> and people pretty much forgot about it and stopped posting it. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> Like he does yeah, it a lot. Even, Just bury it Jack with other Murphy, news. Even Jack Murphy didn't quite make as big of a mistake as Eliza did. Oh, she no, started yeah, he wasn't that, that so hard. That was embarrassing. And Right. He wasn't doing GoFundMes for vacations. Exactly. Um, Which it makes me think we still haven't found out what Eliza's hiding. Because like if, if she's going to this extent and like Jack Murphy was hiding some weird stuff. Uh, um, I, I think it's more like. Jack Murphy was just embarrassing. I would guess if if there's still something to find, it's probably more criminal things that she's hiding. Right. Maybe. Yeah, very well could be. Especially with the sex traffic and stuff. I mean, it would be wouldn't be that ironic. There was a God, I can't remember the guy's name, but I remember a bunch of years ago, like two thousand five or two thousand six, like there was a guy in the government who was like in charge of uh getting rid of child sex trafficking and he was a pedophile. Right. <laughs> so things like that Damn. happen all the time. Yeah, of course. Yeah. They always hire the right people for the job, don't they? Well, yeah. Well, I mean, the best place to, to do lot. these things is like to be in charge of that. Thank you. Yeah. For the super chat. I'm from the same area and 100% she's lying. No house that she grifted for. No people saying she's helped them. She came out right after Evelyn Yang spoke up about the gynecologist because she was Yang Gang back then. Yes. That's where she kind of reemerged really being... Uh, an Andrew Yang supporter. Oh, yeah. Mm. I mean, she's tried every grift except actually building the skill to be entertaining. <laughs> oh, um, I wanted to ask you guys, what do you all make of the whole thing with like Andrew Tate? Because Eliza went on Simple's podcast saying she was like representing these girls, right? And now there are um, allegations that these two ladies were lying and that they were grifting also or trying to or something. There's like these WhatsApp messages that have come out. I don't know if they've been verified, though. So I don't know. I don't think Eliza was personally working with any victims at all. Um, Ashton Birdie is a friend of mine who was in contact with some of them. Actually gave Eliza asked Ashton for their contact info. Ashton gave them. The, at least one girl's contact info and then Ashton followed up you know weeks or months later hey did Eliza ever get in touch with you and she said no Eliza never reached out so I think Eliza is just saying what she needs to say to make it seems like seem like she is close to the survivors and like working with them you know really closely and she I think she just takes she cobbles together sound bites and things from the internet to make it sound like she's very involved when she's not. Yeah. I think she just posts random crap on Twitter that makes her look like an advocate and doesn't actually do anything. She says too many things that aren't indicative of someone who works a lot. 
I do think that, uh, oh, sorry about that. I I was going to say, I think just based on her first statement on Tim pool, uh, when she's talking about the Andrew Tate, uh, victims there, I I think she pretty much admits that she had written out this statement because she says, well, I have to say allegedly at times for legal purposes. And she's reading a quote. You don't doctor a quote. You don't put allegedly inside somebody's quote, you read their quote verbatim. And the problem with that is she's sitting there acting like she had to mess with their quote Mm. and put these words in. Yeah, you shouldn't legally have to. It's not her words. Exactly. And so she pretty much hints that she wrote this. I don't think she was ever in contact with anybody. I think she made all of it up. Uh, and you, it's it's just the strangest thing because you also see her starting to choke up and stuff. It's it's very strange for somebody who she had just gotten a statement from. She had to have gotten that statement within what like twenty four, forty eight hours from then. It, yeah, it was so I think fresh. She was saying it was breaking news then or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It didn't make sense to me. I think she's so bad with the yeah, stuff that she I, wants I, to be famous so much that. Um, she's not worried about infamy and infamy in the age of the internet is very, very bad. You do not want a bunch of people paying attention to you if they don't like you. (laughs) That's true. Yeah. Well, yeah, it was one of the things when she came up with the story about the, uh, uh, Tate victims that she was allegedly in, in cahoots with and brought it to Tim cast. It was one of those things where it's really hard. It's really hard to fact check and, and say with 100% proof, like, no, she's absolutely lying. Like I, I, greatly suspect that she made up the Andrew Tate stuff, uh, at least the the victim statements or whatever. But it's one of those things where, like, you know, she keeps it vague enough where it's really difficult to, like, 100% debunk it. And, you know, that's that's probably something that she, uh, a skill she crafted over time based upon, you know, the, the numerous instances she did that in the past and screwed it up. Yeah, her dad's a politician. She probably learned it somewhere. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. I mean, politicians are very good at things. They're very good at like getting asked a question and then talking for a while and then not answering that question while making you feel like they answered the question. Well, in one of her podcast appearances, she specifically says there is no such thing as bad press. It's just how you spin it. Yeah, in Hollywood, that's true. Not in the internet. <laughs> This is a this was a good comment too from Aiden. She stole her video vixen identity from Kanye's ex girlfriend Amber Rose, her name from model Amina Blue, and her advocacy identity from Annie Lobert. She just copies other people's personalities. It's very borderline oof. of her. <laughs> Absolutely big oof. Takes takes chunks. Uh, yeah, I, I would I see similarities I between heard, all those people. Yeah, I haven't heard Amber yeah. Rose's name in a long time. You remember you remember that weird interview she did with like Jesse Lee Peterson. I think it was where Jesse Lee Peterson was like, uh, so uh, uh, like the uh, doing the slut, asking her about the slut walk or something like that. Wasn't are that you Amber a Rose slut? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> are you happy to be a slut? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Amber Rose is like, what would you call a, a, a guy that sleeps with a bunch of women? And and Jesse was like, I called him a slut maker. <laughs> slut maker. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> Dan Halen, just wait until April. She's going to be publicly trafficked so hard at Mines Fest. Uh, right, right. Yeah, that's a. Well, she's going to have a fun experience Vulcan. and then a year later decide she was trafficked at Mine, Mines Fest. <laughs> I just don't see her going to that. The crowd, I don't see the crowd playing nice with her. There's no I way really she'll don't. go. But if she does, it'll be hilarious. I hope she does. It'll, it'll be good be internet. Great. I hope she does go. And you know what? It, it's probably the only chance she'll have to really save herself if she goes there publicly yeah. and faces her critics if she's genuine uh, i mean it's the only thing she could do at this point to get I her think people she's, to believe her i think and she's she, gonna say her her life's threatened and she'll miss that's what i think honestly yeah but she's become a meme now oh, and that, that's gonna have yeah, a lot of a lot of longevity like the jack murphy beard True. like no one's gonna forget jack <laughs> murphy because of the beard <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, she shouldn't have like the, these these super defining characteristics like that that people can easily put onto a bunch of photos. Like maybe the Jack <laughs> Murphy beer was his biggest mistake. Oh, that's true. Can Chrissy introduce Elle to her t-shirt vendor as she has some spicy shirts she needs? You have some spicy shirts, Elle? I don't I don't do I don't have any merch, but Matthew <laughs> Hammond really seems want to really want you to have no, merch. No, so yeah. uh, I made a joke about creating a t-shirt that said I questioned the science so the ATF shot my dog and now people want that shirt. So, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but I don't have merch though. Uh, but I, apparently you know a guy, so maybe. But Yeah. 
do this it. This is a good point too from Aiden. Having been to Minds events as a speaker, yeah, I, I was at one two in June. They do have a lot of security, and there are segmented areas that are away from the public for speakers. There's tons of there's green room space, especially at the Vulcan, where which I've been to um, for comedy shows at least at the venues I have been at. Yeah, it's not like she's going to be just out in. She can be as uh, far away from people as she wants. Oh, yeah. but everybody on the panels will be against her. Her panel Probably, is yeah. literally wow. Bill Ottman, founder of mine. Oh, my, my, bad, the founders, my bad. Plus, um, Lucy Kowski, plus Ian Crossland. Right. And Ian, the guy there. whose lap she sat and, on. And, and plus oh, I think, Destiny. I think Ian's so still, everyone like, there is to favorable to towards her. Because he, he was saying <laughs> stuff against her, like in the most, like, I don't know what happened, but Eliza, blah, 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 or whatever. Like, he, he knows, like, like this is a bad thing. To I stand think behind. he has a girlfriend now, and he's trying to make it sound like that was a long time ago. That footsie was a long time ago. He's trying to <laughs> he's trying to emotionally distance himself because yeah. I think part of the reason why he had to do that video was because he has a current girlfriend who was like, "What the fuck? When was this?" Yeah, um, that makes sense. He could always show her the timestamp. Man. Of course, yeah. And, and, <laughs> yeah. I think that That's was part of the up. reason why he had to urgently get that video out because he had to be like, no, it wasn't the second time. It was the first period. It's a long time ago. <laughs> right. Dan Halen, Coffee Brain Coffee, Eliza Blue Brand, $500 a bag, but if you buy $150,000 worth, they refuse the sale and accuse you of bean trafficking. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> pretty clever. Thank you, Dan. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to bring in everybody with special intro music. God damn it. <laughs> Nailed it. Head now. <laughs> Squad Bob, so Elle and Sean are dating. Oh, are they? <laughs> are we? Huh? <laughs> are you guys yes. dating too? This so is actually my husband. husband. Every, everyone's dating. Yeah. yeah, but she pointed to she said Picture that. Man. I sent a tweet to World Star Hip Hop Legal. I was hoping they would repost the video on their website. No word yet. We'll send through contact form on World Star Hip Hop tomorrow. Tweet is pinned in my profile. If more people send, maybe we can get answer. What exactly answer to what? Yeah. Probably their know. response to the videos being taken down. Um, IFID only here for Radix, Artie, and Greg's mega death shirt. Aww, that's very <laughs> sweet. <laughs> thank you. Yes, that's ski season. All right, thank you, Jenna. <laughs> Always jet ski season. What do you guys think? Do you have any hopes? Do you guys think anything will actually happen? And for people that are listening and want to still help, like, is there anything we can do? Like, would it make sense to keep tweeting at Ella Irwin at this point? Um, I don't, I, I don't know. know who else would be like, I'd I like to have my help. video restored, but I don't think that's going to happen. I can't even appeal her privacy complaint. It literally won't let me do it. So I don't Which think platform? YouTube. YouTube. Oh yeah. It won't let me appeal her privacy complaint. They took the whole video Same. down and um, I'd like it back up, you know, <laughs> but I don't think it's going to happen. So. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think, it is, but... I think people give up way too easily on some of this stuff. They just so if well, if I'm the person who's doing the bad thing, I know if I just wait like a month or two months, people will forget wow. about it and give up and just lose energy. I think in today's society, society, if you want a lot of the stuff to go away, don't give up until the problem's solved. I mean, that's a good point, but that's like, true. how far can I take it if I can't like appeal what happened on YouTube? Oh, I don't that that that, that you're like, probably screwed. You're probably, but I'm saying like in general, <laughs> yeah. like don't give up on the idea, oh, okay. like like. <laughs> obviously don't just forget about the topic and then because that's what they're expecting you to do and then yeah, what's going to happen is that the next person who's the eliza is going to be like oh look eliza did this a year ago all she had to do was wait two months and everybody stopped talking to her and then or everybody stopped talking about her and then we could just do get away with the same thing yeah and then more I mean, and more people will do it yes that's why i haven't given up the michigan story and i'm making the documentary on that because the fbi can't keep getting away with faking dt plots yeah. And framing innocent people. So, yeah. Well, yeah, the best yeah, that, that's way one to, thing that needs uh, to come out of this, this, this newer generation is people just need to not forget about things and not give up so easily about stuff. I mean, a lot of times you have to, to, to spend a ridiculous amount of effort to get things done. But until people start doing that, bad stuff is just going to keep happening. Yeah, so I guess I it's not completely pointless to keep tweeting, you know, free Brittany Venti, tagging Venti, tagging Ella. Yeah. Um, just keeping it focused to the point of she was locked out for posting a publicly 
available music video. Not just that, because right. I don't think that's super effective. I think the, the better thing to do would be to find ways to make Eliza relevant consistently. So she might die out for a week or two, but then mm -hmm. a documentary from Farron comes out, or then some event she does blows up. Just trying not to find ways of, 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 an, of an, yeah, yeah, not literally, in Minecraft. <laughs> yeah. um, but just trying to find more and more different ways to make her relevant, interesting, that, that'll keep the topic from dying out, as opposed to just doing the easy thing and saying free Britney Venti or free whatever, but that's not going to work. You need to make okay, it interesting so it would to people be who are paying the attention. focused on Eliza then. Yeah, but, but yeah, in a way that's interesting to a lot of people. Perfect. Like a lawsuit would do that. A lawsuit <laughs> would keep it relevant for a while. And then all the law tubers will cover it and then laugh because, again, she's obviously lying. She's a she's a bad criminal, so it'd be pretty easy content. Oh, that's a good that's a good idea, like a class action. Well, yeah, Mike no, Bickle. We, keep, we keep memeing the uh, the heck out of her. Keep uh, I mean, look at Just Jesse Smollett. Memeing. It's been over four years, and his meme is still relevant today. Um, I think if we keep the meme alive, that that kind of immortalizes her. Well, Eliza was on Empire, so. Yeah, she was an extra. Was she? Was she? That's, that's a crazy man. coincidence. Oh, is that why people keep saying Jesse Smollett? Because I thought, I thought people were saying no, Jesse Smollett because to, to to not relate her to Jack Murphy to, to distance it from Tim Pool because that's what Shane Cashman did. It's like, oh wow, everybody's calling her Jack Murphy. Why would you use Jesse Smollett? Well, I mean, but no, she was one hundred percent on. Uh, Hang on, I've got a screenshot of her in the oh, background. Oh, yeah, I've seen that screenshot. Mike Bickle, shout out to based and red pilled Gail Nelson. And you should have the hilarious comedian Gary Meekle on the show. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, I, uh, I should have made a folder with all of my Eliza evidence. Uh, I wonder, I know Baron was listening. Not well. I'm not sure. I, don't, I need an update on when she's releasing her doc in the next week Looks or so. Good so far, hmm. I saw just a tiny snippet of an intro, but not much else. It looks interesting, <laughs> and it's going to be multiple parts, correct? Yeah. Do you know how many parts? I thought it was going to be three. Wow. Yeah, but we'll see how she does. Uh, again, I think there's there's people are going to learn that Hollywood infamy is great when you can control every part of the narrative and not have people question anything. Like if you're in the news uh, and the news wants to profit off of you and they don't have any reason to question you or anything like that, infamy is great as long as you're popular. But in a place where there's free speech or at least more free speech than there is in, in MSM, it's it's not a good it's not a good idea. Like I think people should do a lot to to do the right thing and protect their reputations and not just say, oh, all fame is good frame when that's not really yeah. the case. I mean, you did, did, did Jack Murphy still lose his, did, lose, did he lose all of his subscribers on that one or do people still pay? Not him stuff? all of them. I think they lost a lot. The liminal order might still be a thing. I'm not talking about you. <laughs> yeah, like, the, the crazy thing to me, and I was watching a video on this a couple of days ago with like the, the alpha male pickup artist stuff. Like you only have to have like a few thousand YouTube subscribers to make a lot of money on that stuff, apparently. So because I was like, Jack Murphy is like a nobody. He's got like a, a 50,000 subs. He gets like a thousand views on a video. How's this guy making so many uh, subscribers and sponsorships for his for his thing? So that was always well, we saw his me. old videos on how he was making money. Oh, yeah. Sean, but, but are you to, thinking of a of a career pivot? I could see you in the manosphere. <laughs> I could be like, uh, bro, all you have to do with women is blah. This is what I bro, <laughs> I just work shit. out and treat those bitches like shit. I, I, I just want to be in I want to be in, in my dream podcast to go on one of the Alpha Male podcasts where I say something. I go, women be like this or whatever, and then someone in the background goes, Yeah, man, they do be like that or something like that. You need you need a hype man. Yeah. <laughs> I got your that's, hat, Sean. That's, that's that's the tweet I found where I found out that she was on Empire. So she's like, right, yeah. she's very blurred wow. out, which is funny, but she was an extra on it. Oh my goodness! That's a, that's as much technically there as you can say you are. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like a. It's like a she probably because I've been I I unfortunately did some extra work when I was trying to find myself. I bet she's the type to just like intentionally like walk into the frame even when she's like not supposed to. Like there there would be people. In, in the extra world, uh, they just they ask kiss and they just try for as much like unnecessary screen time as possible because they're just like they're trying to move on up. 
Yeah, I, I was uh, uh, an extra in like a fan project, and but a lot of people were also paid by Central Casting. It was a uh, quite an experience to be around the people who do extra work. They're insane. They're and all every, every one Ill. of them wants to be a, a, a superstar, and none of them are good at acting. Yeah. <laughs> And there's they, also like there's also like a tier like among the extras. There's the union and then non-union and the union extras oh, think yeah, they're hot true, shit yeah. and they treat non-union extras like like absolute garbage. Oh my garbage. goodness, that's so mean. <laughs> it, it's it's something that people who don't have talent do because people who have talent typically yeah. have a lot more respect, and they, they don't like they just think it's oh it's who you know it's connections or it's just locks. Like no, most times it's skill. Like you go to a casting call, I'm sure they see thousands of people who are just terrible at their job to see like 10 people who are good and that might actually fit the role yeah it's crazy divinity said oh thanks for the super chat how do you separate eliza's abuse from farron's she's dmca struck me four times since december because she wants to hide her behavior did you speak on her lifting lisa Ling all right lisa ling's words yet okay i actually have no idea about any of this these this would sound this sounds like more of a question for farron um because I'm just unfamiliar with any of this. Yeah, you have to look into this sometimes. There's a lot of times people will say false DMCA and it's actually like relevant DMCA things. I think one of the big things that uh, the streamer Pokemon was was uh, hit for was was copyright claiming people. But if you look at the actual cases, they were actually stealing her content. They were just re-uploading clips of her streams. Yeah, like if you post Farron's content and it's not transformative and you're not commenting or e-fapping on it or changing it in some way, if you're just playing her stuff and like, you know, getting up, going to the bathroom or like not doing anything to it, then that is worthy of a of a copyright strike for sure. I, yeah. I learned that lesson the hard way many times. I mean, there, there are uh, plenty of cases stuff. where, I don't know, maybe I'm a little bit too lean on where like bigger streamers have done things that are not transformative. Like they just sat there and played video games in the background yeah. and said like one thing that is... I could technically claim that, but I don't uh, because of people will say things like that. So yeah, I, I don't know. I think you have to actually look into the case and see if it's if it's genuinely like she's transforming the content or just re-uploading it. Yeah. And also, like, how did you appeal it? Did you reach out? You know, what exactly was done? But I know I, I was frustrated the first few times I got struck on things. Um, Sesrin, I think you missed my super chat. This one? I didn't miss this one. Let me look through. I don't think I missed anything. Um, okay, okay. Oh, we got more links. This Instagram. No, so one. it's just it's a it's an old post from Instagram from February of 2015. It's Eliza did an interview with a, someone from the set or like someone who was on Empire for Hip Hop wow. Magazine. It's just it's just like something like. No, but like, <laughs> do you think it would inhabit? Do you think your actor persona now because you've been on such a hit television? Wait, I'm gonna refresh this. She's got her uh, Instagram her accent. Her uh, yeah, Whoa. her black accent. Inhabit your street cred to the point if that's even like a term. I don't even know. But like, You'll see her do you second. think it would inhabit? Do you think your actor persona now because you've been on such a hit television? But do you think that your it's a, just like a tiny little people, clip? But that's her oh. like interacting inhabit with Empire people. Wow. wow. <laughs> Like yeah, she's got that that no, black scent. Like, yeah. yeah. She's, she's channeling Randy Jackson from her, her American Idol experience. <laughs> oh my goodness! And so uh, they the they, they, look so much. <laughs> they tag her old Instagram on that uh, Eliza underscore nose. And just another thing that I think is interesting because that that Instagram is gone. But interestingly enough, I have found a lot of her old posts, which I don't think you could probably show this on your. Uh, stream. I don't know. Maybe we'll look at this one off screen. And then, but like, <laughs> weirdly enough, you can actually use Pinterest to find old Instagram posts. No. Which is weird. Wow. Oh, yeah, probably can't show that. Yeah. Probably not. <laughs> it's, but, it's, a, it's a little bit of a so, lingerie. But I found a lot of her old Pinterest. I don't, I don't know. Instagram How did they get on Pinterest? Traffic, took selfies, so it, it's it's like the I guess the image is saved and then the text or at least part of it is also saved. So I use like I use Pinterest quite a bit actually. If I can't find something, like it's oh, kind wow. of like a last ditch effort, but it's actually very interesting what you can find on there. Yeah, if you have any sort of notoriety, people are going to archive absolutely everything you do. So just expect it. Well, so she had a Pinterest account. Uh, it's like underscore eliza seeper it's like it's not it's not terribly exciting or anything like that but like i found like her old foursquare where she's checking in places around chicago at the time she's being trafficked which is weird you know uh 
I don't know. It's, it's interesting. Jesus. Like the old, like all the old apps that we used to use and didn't even think about it. You know how a lot of people used yeah. to, I used to do like it. Like getter. just check in on oh, Foursquare. so bad. Um, or that. Square. Like think about all the times you checked in on Foursquare. No, Eliza has a Foursquare. Oh, this is like traumatizing. Go delete it all. If you remember your login, go delete it now. <laughs> so I mean, not Eliza, it's late for her, but for the rest of y'all. Yeah. Go uh, delete um, your old like Foursquare, your like untapped or whatever, where you logged in and like checked out the beers that you were drinking at different places. That's like Thank terrible. You, Void Wraith for the super chat. This is for the Eliza Blue blend coffee joke thank you from <laughs> sesrin have you heard of the issue surrounding fair and balance love your show christy arthemisia is the awesome happy to see you on here bud much love <laughs> thank you uh i don't know yeah when you say just the issue surrounding fair and balance i don't know what that means maybe if you could be a little more like specific in the comments um yeah, all I know is that she's been working on this uh, documentary pretty hard for a month. That that Pinterest and Foursquare stuff is funny, though. I don't know. That's like very boomer to use your actual name on the Internet, especially like 10, 15 years ago. I, I thought everybody used aliases. Wow. Now, yeah, one of the looks things that changed I've... so much over the years. Well, what do you, what do you guys think of uh, the, the Carolyn Borisenko uh, aspect of the Eliza Blue uh. <laughs> no, no, I can't stand Dr. She blocked Carlin. me so long ago. I don't even know what she's saying about her. Dr. Carlin <laughs> is a questionable individual that dated a confirmed pedo. Like she knew they were a pedo while she dated this person, while they were in prison. And she herself is like a weird stalker and is obsessive and creepy. Not, um, you know... A smart doctor, I guess. <laughs> I don't like Dr. <laughs> Carlin, though. She said that anybody that uses the term like anti-white when talking about critical race theory is somehow like a bad person or something, which is ridiculous because that's what CRT is. Oh, so she's a I racist then. <laughs> yeah. And so she, of course, inserted herself into this whole thing with Tim Cast and wrote this like series of articles it might be series. It might've just been one where she was like, the mob came for me too. And the mob canceled Tim pool. And, you know, like she refers to all of us, everybody who asked a question about Eliza as part of this, like, you know, cannibalistic mob, like Shane Cashman has called us that, you know, and just said that like, Oh, the mob canceled Tim pool. He's not canceled. Neither is Eliza. She's said that both of them have been canceled. Like, no, when we say yeah, neither has canceled, been canceled, I refer to that as like someone that has been completely blacklisted off of big tech platforms. Like oh, they're yeah. not allowed they're, to they're, be on they're Twitter. Basically, they're basically mainstream That's media what now. That's being canceled mm -hmm. is like, you're not yeah. allowed to use Airbnb or something like that. Right. She's saying they have both been canceled and it's like, no, they're not. They're both still, you know, propped up and promoted on these big tech platforms. Tim pool show is always recommended. It gets boosted in the algorithms. We know this. Uh, same with Eliza, who gets recommended to people as someone to follow on Twitter. So they're not canceled. Yeah. Canceled would yeah, be boy, like Gavin canceled. McGinnis. You're not allowed on Twitter anymore. You're exactly. not like yeah, they, they changed that defin definition years ago because they realized that nobody on the left was being canceled. So now it's just like right. canceled means a bunch of people got mad at me versus like it's like Sargon getting deplatformed from Patreon and losing 20 grand a month or Alex Jones Thank being you. deleted off of everything. So yeah. now you have yes. to use the word canceling your bank. Yeah, they, they ruined the words. Now you have to use the word deplatforming. And it's, oh, it's a little see. bit harder to destroy that word. But yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's weird to see that that Shane Cashman and other people doing the exact same thing that MSM does accuse you of a term that doesn't really define it. like everybody who disagrees with the left is now alt right uh, racist Nazi, even though that's not true at all. They're doing the same things. Yeah. Well, yeah, Boris Senko's like like she's a she's a nutcase. Uh, she got on my case like uh, I don't know like a couple years ago because I called a a certain figure in the conservative movement. I called him a snitch in an article, and and she like you know went ape shit on me. Yeah, <laughs> but like the, the way the way she's reacting to this Eliza Blue stuff, like it's it's borderline psychotic. I read I read this thing that she put on. I don't know if it was like a Substack or something like that, but she wrote this article. Like she even screen capped. I think it was you, Chrissy, and and Farron, and a few other people. Like in this article, like screen cap pictures. Like are these gonna be the people who are gonna save the conservative movement? 
Like this lady's a nutcase. <laughs> like, like really? I, I even wow. commented on like, yeah, when I, I commented on that thing on the, uh, on whoever shared that Substack of hers, like I, I said, like uh, reading this made my penis shrink. Like that's that's how <laughs> bad <laughs> this thing was. Yeah, I don't even know if I like using the term conservative. I'd rather use uh, anti-establishment because I think that's a more unif unifying term because people on the left and the right are both anti-establishment, and that's really the problem. Um, is the 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 big corporate interests, the big government interests that that are really in it for them and not in it for anybody else. Um, so. I don't know. I just feel like a lot of the stuff, all those, this, the civil people fighting each other is actually probably going to bear up pretty good during election time in two years because we'll already have all our crap together because everybody's already been exposed. We've already rebuilt by then. So maybe all this bad stuff is a good thing. Yeah, I agree. Like anti establishment is a, is a more accurate way to describe it than you don't have to necessarily be conservative. Because um, I, I think you, you alienate a lot of people when you say things like, like, like if you, you specifically say conservative, because I, I found like I didn't know this until I was a content creator for a while. I was like, hey, there are actually a lot of people on the other side of the argument who completely agree with you. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Poofy, for the super chat. Hi, L, Chrissy team and chat. Happy President's Day. Yes. Happy President's Day, everyone. <laughs> oh, I thought today was Ukraine Day. <laughs> uh, Every day is. Well, apparently. Yeah. He's in Jeremy, thanks so. for the super chat. Eliza removed from Minds. Oh, yeah, I've been looking. I have not seen anything to support that. Minds has not posted anything to that effect. Uh, maybe that's just a wish that you and have. They're all friends with Fantastic. I, uh, I have not seen that anywhere. Work for mine, so. uh, Divinity, Divinity. Farron is doing all this too. It's okay. She false DMCA people to silence them. It's okay because she's on your team. She did it Monday this week. Again, like I, this is the first I'm hearing of this, and this is actually pretty separate from the, the reason why we're all here doing a, a live stream right now, which is to talk about Eliza and censorship. I get it. People have an ax to grind with probably each of us individually. You know, all of us have our own individual haters and things, but again, like, I, if someone is copyright claiming you, that doesn't mean they're trying to silence you. It could just mean that you're using their, uh, their, con your, their content in a way that's not transformative. Yeah, I mean, if there's evidence of that, great. But she she just posted yeah. a statement. She didn't post evidence, so it's like not really moral to to start finger wagging at us for not yeah. agreeing with her. But that's it. All of us have haters. It's impossible. It's impossible to be on the internet and uh... just type your name plus exposed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> plus exposed. You know, you'll see some wild stuff. Oh no! Yeah, doesn't want to be <laughs> sad. <laughs> Especially like the, the guy who thinks he's totally got it right. I know everything about this person. Yeah. Those are always fun. Sean, exposed. Oh, man. People have done that a couple of times. Like, no, every every single part of that statement's wrong. <laughs> yeah. It's it, it's interesting. I would just say, yeah, like, I'm excited to see her documentary come out. Um, I, I know it's been hyped up and... Yeah, I don't know. I am excited to see it. So, I mean, if there is foul play, it'll come out eventually. Yeah, like it always does. You know, like it has with Eliza. It, again, if yeah, if anybody is up to no good, it'll eventually come out. It's very, very hard to keep things secret these days. Mm -hmm. For That's sure. Right. For sure. Well, yeah, I want to thank everybody for all the all the hard work you've been doing. And I feel like I've learned a lot about researching and investigating just from talking to all of you, just learning new tips. So it'll be uh, it'll come in handy for the next grifter that uh, we all want to <laughs> investigate. Uh, so let's go around and just let people know where they can find you and follow you and anything that's coming up. And we'll start with Christina. Okay, so you can follow my channel. It's Radix Verum. Um, you can go to my website. It's RadixVerum.com. Right now it's under construction, but you'll have links to all of my socials where you can find me. I'm currently working on a documentary about the Michigan plot to kidnap Gretchen Whitmer that was instigated by the FBI. I am working with one of the men who was acquitted in that case, Brandon Caserta. And um, I'm fundraising for that. It's called Kidnap and Kill an FBI Terror Plot. I have the trailer up on my website. You can also go to knkfilm.com. You can watch the trailer there and find all of our socials and all of that. I, I want to have it done by like the end of this year, but I don't know if I'll be able to get it completed by then. It's a lot of work and 
I'm trying to raise a lot of money to finish it because it costs money to do it and to travel. I've got to go to like five or six more locations across the country, but hopefully you guys will find it really informative and I'm going to provide the other side of the narrative to that story of what happened with the FBI's plot to kidnap Gretchen Whitmer. So yeah, knkfilm.com. Thanks guys. <laughs> Thanks, Christina. Arthemisia. All righty. Well, I am Arthemisia. You can follow my channel here on YouTube. I uh, have a new Twitter. I don't know if I'm supposed to have or not, but we'll find out here in a couple weeks. Uh, it is called RD Media, A R T Y M E D I A. Uh, please, yeah, give a follow. And uh, my next uh, video I'm going to end up doing is, uh, well, actually, breaking news of, as of a few minutes ago there. I don't want to change the subject too much, but I guess James O'Keefe is out. Wow. Oh my God. Yeah. That's pretty shocking. Wild stuff. So that's, that's nuts. yeah. That, I don't know. I don't know what they were thinking, <laughs> but I guess we'll, we'll see what happens. I, I'm kind of, I, I don't want to get black pilled. <laughs> so Damn. at least before reading yeah. it. But, I was listening to a Michael mouse thing. He made a book called the white pill and goes over all these really horrible things that happened in history. He's like, yeah. And they still lost. So. <laughs> wow! Wow! Yeah. Yeah, no, no, like, oh uh, like the, the the dictators and the evil people still lost, and there there gets to be a point where like this person's doing a really really bad thing, and there becomes an extent that even a really really evil person won't do this horrible thing. So, I mean, over time, we'll probably win, or or everything oh. goes to crap and everything falls, and nothing's worth living for anyway. I don't know. Just to be well, super depressed about that. Yeah. Now it seems you, to be the case. We're, we're, we we always seem to getting win. Getting Sean pilled. Yeah. <laughs> if you zoom out long enough, uh, good always wins, or uh, everything goes to shit. Um, and that hasn't happened yet, so good keeps winning. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Greg Hoyt. Oh. Uh, yes. Uh, you know, oh. in terms of. <laughs> uh, he was on a, he was on a delay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, like I'm. I'm he was I'm looking at right Eliza Blue old Instagram posts that we're sharing. Yeah, right. oh, sorry, no, been, <laughs> no, no. I've been link bombing in the chat. I, I am, There's some fun stuff. I, I am. I am not simping. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I have the channel, the breakdown with Greg Hoyt, and you know, I do an amalgamation of stuff on there. I have covered stuff about Eliza, you know, and I've shared, you know, uh, uh, that's that's where people, you know, can get caught up on that if if somebody's lacking in knowledge or something like that any viewer wants to get brought up to speed on that stuff they can check out those videos at the breakdown with greg hoyt uh but i'm also posting new con out uh content out there you know like i recently did an interview with a, a local heavy metal band since i'm like a 100 percent free agent you know indie media guy now i can cover what i want which is actually pretty liberating um you know, and, and I don't know. Uh, and if anybody's interested, maybe I'll use my channel to talk about old prison stories. I don't know if people want to hear that. Uh, but yeah, yeah. So you can follow me uh, also on Twitter at Greg Hoyt L E T. Great, great, awesome. Thanks, Greg. And Lauren. Hi. Uh, you can find my website is Big Dig energy.com or i'm sorry no it's not even dot com it's dot info big dig energy dot info uh which has the links to all the various socials i'm across the web i've been kicked off twitter YouTube, basically everywhere so that's where you can keep up with me i have a how-to on there for how to scrape data from twitter uh the way that i do if you want to set it up even if you don't know a lick of code it doesn't matter i have it like step by step uh, i tend to kind of focus more on like trying to show people how to find information that they find interesting because there's uh like everyone's interested in their own thing right and you feel like something's not get, getting covered enough and you want to know more about it so that's kind of my angle so big dig energy info that's Thanks. great very helpful uh yeah. and john last but not least i feel like all my promotions are already on screen <laughs> Uh, you can find me at the youtube channel think before you sleep and you can follow me on twitter at tbys tweet um, all that information is on the channel. Awesome. Thank you, everybody, for joining me today. This was super informative and interesting. And, yeah, I guess we'll have to just wait and see. We'll have to we'll see what happens. Uh, yeah, thank you, everybody, in the chat for your comments and questions. And you keep memeing. Everybody just keep memeing, and things will improve. <laughs> see you next time, guys. <laughs> Bye.